And with that kind of value structure, um, we really like started attracting those type of people that were like, okay, uh, yes, I want to make money in NFTs, but I also believe that, you know, NFTs can do good. Today, I'm very excited to be joined by Amanda Terry. If you don't know who Amanda is, she is the co-founder and COO of Metagood, the company behind the NFT project Onchain Monkey. She is also the managing partner at ACTAI Ventures. Amanda, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to have you here today. So my I, today, we're going to talk about some of the exciting business lessons from the Onchain Monkeys project. But before we go there, I want to hear a little bit of your backstory. Like, how'd you get into NFTs? How'd you get into Web3? And then maybe lead us up to the, to what you're doing today. Start wherever you want to start. Sure. Yeah. So my background, I guess, before uh, co-founding Metagood was really more in Web2. Um, I had worked at four different startups that had been acquired. I worked at some larger companies like Twitter, NBC, but kind of always in the digital media uh, Web2 space. Um, and I'm also an avid kite boarder. Uh, and I met my now business partner and chairman, Bill Tai, back in 2013 at uh, one of his events, uh, kiteboarding events, which is kind of for tech entrepreneurs. And fast forward. Uh, Wait, to quick. What, what is kiteboarding for those that don't know what that is? Uh, kiteboarding is uh, basically you're either you're basically on a board and you are attached to harness and there's a kite that is pulling you in the water or on snow. Um, and it's a really fun kind of uh, activity. Kind of an extreme sports okay. kind of thing. Kind of extreme sports. Yeah. Yeah. So kiteboarding. So like, tell me a little bit more. Like what did you guys, how did you guys decide to like want to start a business together? Tell us a little bit about that story. Uh, well, actually the, the, the group is called Acti Global. It stands for athletes, conservationists, technologists, artists, and innovators. Right. Um, and really uh, around two main missions, um, ocean conservation and then economic empowerment via entrepreneurship. So this group has started the largest tech ecosystem for tech for good called the Extreme Tech Challenge, which is still running and has, has expanded uh, immensely over the past few years. Um, the Necker Blockchain Summit, um, which has, I think, happened for the last eight years on Sir Richard Branson's private island, bringing together uh, tech startup people, government people. All of these were kind of um, outshoots from this group, uh, Acti Global. And um, so I joined in, in 2013, first time trying to ca uh, kiteboard in Cabarete. Fast forward to 2018, and Bill was seed investing in Dapper Labs. So I was hearing all about CryptoKitties. And for the nonprofit, we actually created a Hanu Kitty, which stands for Turtle Cat. And we auctioned it off at the Necker Blockchain Summit, raised over 50 grand and donate all the proceeds to Captain Paul Watson to park a boat off the coast of Antigua to protest, protect the turtle nesting area. And that was actually the first NFT for ocean conservation. Um, Bill went on to fund uh, Dapper at their 30 million, a 38 million valuation. And fast forward to then 2021, and Bill introduced me to Danny Yang, who is my co-founder. Uh, Danny founded the Stanford Bitcoin meetup in 2013. He founded MyCoin, which is the largest cryptocurrency exchange in Taiwan. And he found a block here, which he sold in 2018. And so Danny's the CEO of Metagood. I'm COO and Bill um, is chairman. Uh, Bill was, for people don't know him, he's a pretty well-known venture capitalist, but he was the first investor in Zoom. And uh, he seeded, obviously, Dapper Labs, Canva, uh, and now 23 public traded companies. So um, I feel super honored to get to work alongside these guys every day in, in founding Metagood. And you know, the, the real idea behind it was, you know, um, how do you do what we did with Hanu Kitty, but instead of one NFT... How do you do that at scale? How can NFTs create uh, wealth for a community, but also do real world good? And so that's kind of the premise of Metagood. Um, we launched OnChain Monkey uh, in September 2021. We were the first profile pick collection done all on chain in a single Ethereum transaction, which was a historic first. That means it was very efficient in terms of uh, how these monkeys were created. Um, and then we made history again in February of this year, uh, inscribing the first 10,000 NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. And so um, we've created an incredible community around us of truly a conglomerate of uh, similar to the ACTI acronym, but really like investors, innovators, artists, athletes um, who believe that Web3 uh, can create wealth for communities and also do real world good. And so, yeah, we're, we're kind of living the vision that we um wanted to create uh, back in 2021 and kind of building on uh, what we did with Hanu Kitty in 2018. 
Tell us a little bit about your role as the chief operating officer. Kind of what does that entail? Uh, just so people can understand how that might be valuable uh, for perhaps another visionary to have an operating officer like yourself. Like what, what's the day-to-day kind of work? What was it in the beginning and what kind of work does it, does it entail today? Yeah. I mean, I think chief operating officer is just kind of second to Danny, but you could almost call me chief community officer because really so much of Web3 is about community building. So, you know, Danny has a PhD in computer science from Stanford. So he's definitely the one that coded all the monkeys into existence. He's the builder that's kind of running our product and eng team. Um, But everything kind of around, um, you know, how do we promote our project? How do we build strong community? Um, How do we bring together a community online? So Discord or in real life, um, any type of partnerships, collaborations kind of all fall under me. So we kind of divide it by technical and then business. Um, and then Bill is really kind of the strategic chairman that, you know, we're very fortunate to to have regular calls with as well. But he's helping us to think about kind of direction of the company, fundraising and those type of things. Tell us a little bit about um, about the different various NFT projects that kind of spawned out of the on-chain monkey. And just give us a little bit of the numbers. Like when you first launched the, the on-chain monkey, how many of those were there and what was the mint price? And then maybe just go through a little bit of I know you've got all these other things that you guys have in your ecosystem. Sure. Yeah. So um, when we launched in September 2021, it was actually a free mint. um, And that was 10,000 Genesis monkeys. Um, And there's a few good medium posts that Danny wrote about those, but kind of like the making of on-chain monkey. um, And then another one about like, hey, my kid could do this in two minutes because the art was very, very simple. But the reason why it had to be that is because it was all done in this, you know, in compressed space, right? It was all done on-chain and in a single Ethereum transaction. So those 10,000 monkeys launched um, and then, you know, kind of they steadily have been, you know, going up in price. So that's been, you know, real value creation for our community that came in early. Those were all minted within, uh, I think, four hours of just, you know, a a tweet basically going out. Um, And then we dropped 10,000 desserts to our holders. Um, The rarest 20 of those have sold for over $200,000, these celestial cakes. And so, you know, you know, your Genesis monkey will eat a dessert. It can either have an ice pop, uh, a divine donut or a celestial cake, and then it will get another version of uh, its monkey, but it will be done. Um, it was actually done by a Hollywood animation team behind the movies, Rio, Ice Age and Ferdinand, and that's called the Karma Monkeys. Um, so we minted, you know, a, a group of, of those monkeys as well. Um, that was available for public mint last June. Um, and both the Genesis and the Karma Monkeys are kind of your passport into this wealthy digital nation. And when we say wealth, um, obviously people are in NFTs for investment reasons. So, you know, you know, they want the value of those NFTs to go up. Um, so we're constantly thinking about, you know, how to create value for our holders. But also, you know, wealth can also mean social connectivity. So we've done a poker tournament with our investors, Charlie Lee, who's the creator of Litecoin, Owen Wilson, Woody Harrelson. Um, that was super fun on Discord. We just, during NFT NYC, did a private party on the New York Stock Exchange floor as one of like the only NFT companies to ever do that. So we actually had all of our on-chain monkeys projected up on the jumbotrons of the New York Stock Exchange floor, which was just incredibly fun for all of our holders, especially the ones that got included uh, to be up on those screens. Um, you know, wealth can also mean uh, physical health. So we have a group of monkeys that work out every day. Um, they're called the Monkey Misfits. And they post their workouts on Twitter and Discord, and they keep each other motivated um, through a token we launched called the Banana Token. Which, if you're a holder, you can earn these tokens if you're if you're um, active in our Discord and Twitter. And so they are literally giving each other bananas for working out together. Um, I'll say finally, you know, wealth can be social impact. So you know, we were honored to be named Fast Company's 2022 uh, best world changing ideas for impact investing because we've used our secondary revenues to do things like getting Sharbat Gula and her family. She was the cover of Nat Geo uh, magazine, her family out of Afghanistan to Italy um, a couple of Thanksgivings ago. Uh, we also raised over 185 grand for humanitarian aid in Ukraine just through the sale of our NFTs. So um, you know, we've done a lot of 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 interesting things. Um, so those are the those are the um three collections that have been publicly minted. Um, We also, when we launched Ordinals and we did the first 10,000 on Bitcoin, we told everyone if you had an on-chain monkey on Ethereum, either Genesis or Karma, you would also get that monkey as an Ordinal. So that was another huge value add to our community. And basically we saw our 
floor price of the Ethereum monkeys triple overnight because there was very high demand to get one of those, you know, part of the first collection ever uh, inscribed fully on Bitcoin. Um, and now we have another uh, collection coming up called Dimensions, which is a 3D animated interactive uh, collection, high, high art on Bitcoin. And it kind of looks like a bust of one of your Genesis monkeys, but they're rotating around. So the eyes kind of follow you um, as as the bust goes around and you can use keyboard features to get it to turn different ways to change the background. Um, some alphas, there's some laser eyes for Bitcoin maxis in there as well. And you can turn on and off the, the laser eyes. So it's a really cool first of its kind type of collection. Um, and those are on kind of early Satoshi's dating back to 2009. So really when Bitcoin was just getting started. Very cool. Uh, we're going to dig in on some of this stuff in a little bit, but there are some people listening, I'm sure, that are perhaps unsure as to why their business, maybe they're creators, maybe they're entrepreneurs, maybe they're marketers working for businesses of all sizes, why maybe they should care about NFTs. What's your take to someone who is in the discovery phase right now and maybe needs to take it back to a boss or um, to themselves just to be persuaded as to the why they should focus on NFTs? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a few things. I mean, first of all, um, because they're digital programmable assets, um, there's a lot of interesting properties to that. So unlike a piece of, let's say, a painting done in a gallery, once it's sold, um, there's really no revenue back to that initial creator when it's sold again and again, or, or same thing with uh, uh, yeah, m many you know creators or, or musicians. With digital programmable assets, you can actually set a royalty so that you know every time um, an NFT is sold, some percentage goes back to the creator, which is you know a very new model of kind of um, supporting artists and and creators. So that's I think one thing. Um, also, because all of these digital assets, unique digital assets, are on the Bitcoin blockchain or on the Ethereum blockchain, you can actually establish provenance, so you know that it was authentic, you know, kind of the history of who's bought it and when. Um, things like that are, are not typically tracked so easily any other asset in any other way. So it's, it's really a way to kind of um, establish authenticity and provenance. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a very new way to kind of, um, you know, bring communities together. Um, so in the case of OnChain Monkey, um, you know, unlike kind of a, a Web2 startup, if you look at like Facebook or Twitter, where you know, really their business models are around advertising. And, you know, as a consumer of that project on, on, on Facebook, I'm, you know, I'm clicking through, I'm, I'm watching things, but, you know, I'm kind of the product, right? I'm, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm looking at advertising. That's how they make their revenue. Um, in, in Web3 and in NFTs, all of our NFT holders are actually part of our community. They're stakeholders in our project because they're all owners in a way, right? They all own um, an on-chain monkey and they want to see the value of that go up. And so it's a very different mentality instead of kind of a sit back, kind of passive um, consuming uh, content uh, uh, way of interacting. Um, you know, we have we, we've set up a DAO where, you know, 50 percent of our public mint revenues went into. So we have over four million dollars in a DAO where all of our NFT holders can actually um, propose uh, to get funding from that DAO. And they actually vote for how those fundings are, are, are being used. So it's a very interactive um, you know, inclusive stakeholding model um, to, you know, to, to, to participate in, which we think is is really exciting. I think there's a lot of brands in Web3 that are are very excited about it as a it. way to be like a new membership model. I love it. Okay, so um, let's go back to the day you decided with your co-founder that you guys wanted to start an NFT project. Like, what was the, what was the vision? What was the idea back then? Like, um, you said it was in September of 2021, right? So this is kind of right in the mania era of NFTs, right? This is after V Friends, right? Um, and this is after Board Ape Yacht Club, I'm assuming, right? So yeah. I'm just curious, like what what was going through, what what, what what was like the vision and what was kind of the discussions going on? You know, like, should we do this? Shouldn't we do this? Like, I'd love to just hear a little bit of what happened with the vision. Yeah, so we, we founded the company in, in May 21. So we're, you know, right coming up on our two year anniversary, which is funny in the Web3 space, we're like an OG NFT collection being two years old, which is, um, and in almost any other business, you know, two years would not be, just be like 10 years in any other not business. OG. Yeah, but we are pretty OG in the space. Um, and we were actually working on another collection idea. It was originally going to be around bears. Um, oh. And then 
Danny is kind of like a, just a challenge to himself, wanted to see if he could, you know, code 10,000 of these SVG files on chain that would actually fit, you know, in, in a single Ethereum transaction. And he launched it. And um, like I said, they were just minted within four hours. And we're like, okay, like, I guess that, you know, we didn't do the traditional um, pre-marketing allow list and Twitter, you know, marketing for this um, and Discord was not set up. It was all kind of set up the day it launched. So, um, well, yeah. let me ask this question. Did he have a huge following on Twitter? Is that how he was able to mint this thing out? Or uh, was he real connected with other projects? And that's how kind of the word got out? Well, I mean, I think definitely, you know, founding the Stanford Bitcoin meetup in 2013, he's definitely a crypto OG. And so, yes, we have a number of investors who came in after that. But, um, you know, Charlie Lee, Bobby Lee, um, CEO of Etherscan, um, Roam, CEO of Dapper Labs. Actually, Roam was one that tweeted it, you know, within, I think the first hour we launched and then all the NBA Top Shot people came in. So, um, yeah, we do have a number of kind of OG uh, crypto entrepreneurs and founders that are part of our investor network who, you know, um, helped to support us as well. Do you think that we, you were there? You were, were you part of the project? You were part of the project at this point, obviously. Oh, yeah. Right. No, I mean, right at the beginning, we, we co-founded the company together. What was the idea? Yeah. What was the vision? Like, what was the idea? OK, we're going to mint these out for free. Like, and then what? I mean, like, what was what was the vision back then? Um, I think the vision was let's create value for all these holders. Right. Let's let's launch something that we think is cool technically and is innovative and is really a first. Um, and then from there, you know, we created a, um, value system, which people started typing in Twitter and discord, which is rise ex exclamation R I S E, which stands for respect, treat everyone with respect, integrity. You know, we strive for the highest ethical standards, sustainability. We build for the future and enrichment. Um, you know, we want to create wealth for our holders that then enable them to do, you know, real world good. And with that kind of value structure, um, we really like started attracting those type of people that were like, okay, uh, yes, I want to make money in NFTs, but I also believe that, you know, NFTs can do good. And so we kind of established a very different culture than a lot of other NFT collections. Um, but, you know, even then doing like a 10,000 free airdrop dessert where, you know, the rarest of those were selling for $200,000. I mean, that was like right, right early on, we were always thinking about like, how do we create value for our holders? And, um, you know, we've been one of the top, if not the top NFT collections in terms of um, profitable trades. And there's been like different websites that have tracked it. I mean, obviously helps if you're a free mint as well, but it, just in terms of people actually like being in the in the green for their investing in, in Onchain Monkey. Um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Whenever those stats come out, we're like, oh, wow, we're like off the charts in terms of like profitability, profitable trades for our holders. Um very cool. A uh, couple quick questions. Um, of the the ten thousand initial NFTs, like how many unique holders was that? And because usually people end up minting more than one, I don't know if uh, approximately how many was it. And also, uh, when you expanded your collection, I'm curious, like how big is the is the audience now of holders? And it doesn't have to be exact. Any kind of sense of it would be good. Yeah, I'm just. I I would honestly, I could just go back and look probably in OpenSea to see. I mean, I know. Um, now I think we have like 32% unique owners of the Genesis collection. Um, but I think at one point it was probably more like it was probably a higher number of, of owners, but there's some people that are just really big whales that are um, going and buying, you know, more and kind of consolidating their positions in, in on chain monkey. But even that's a pretty high number of, you know, having 2,993 um, yep. those are unique wallets. So it mean, people could have multiple wallets. And what about when you launch the second collection with the 3d looking, uh, apes, uh, with the, for the karma monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that is, yeah. I mean, that's like 23% unique owners right now. So yeah, two, 2,781 unique wallets. Um, I'll just did the collection size expand on that one. Did you guys end up with 10,000 or did you do more than 10,000 on that? One? Um, so, th so, um, there was, I think about 7,000 that minted, but then through desserts. So if you have a Genesis monkey and you feed it a dessert, you get a karma monkey with those traits. So if you have, let's say an alien monkey Genesis and you feed it a ice pop, you will get an alien karma monkey 
um, but it will be a karma version of it, if that makes sense. So you keep your Genesis monkey, you get a new version of the Genesis monkey, um, depending on which dessert that you feed your monkey. So does that mean there are 10,000 of the karma monkeys also, or is there actually more? Well, there's currently 11,900 because people have taken their 10,000 Genesis and they've fed them desserts and created a karma monkey. Uh, okay. And then there's about 7,000 that were uniquely minted at the time of you know, June uh, 2022 last year. You know, for folks that are listening right now, I just want to like help everybody wrap their head around this. We're talking about just a few thousand people, right? And this is what's unique about the NFT world. You don't need tens or hundreds of thousands of people to invest in your project for it to be very successful, right? Because, you know, obviously uh, the company I run, Social Media Examiner, we focus on the social media side of things, right? And you would think that those numbers would be very difficult to do a business with, but these aren't just followers. These are people that have made um, you know, some sort of a commitment to either get in on the free project or to invest in these various other projects. And it's just proof that you don't need to have a massive community, right, of millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people that are quote unquote customers with a few thousand people, you can make a big difference. Um, early days. I mean, really, yeah. you know, like there's an, a, that's a large number because really like NFTs are still so new. I mean, you look at CryptoKitties, that was 2018. Um, then really it was like 2021 when things really started to pick up again. So we're still in very early days in terms of adoption. And, you know, it's still not super easy for many people to get onboarded into crypto in terms of getting a MetaVast wallet or getting a Bitcoin wallet, um, you know, transferring funds from some type of exchange in and then actually purchasing. So I think it, you know, we are very, very early on what we consider like the next big wave, kind of like if internet was 2.0, you know, Web3 is the next wave but we're very early on that wave yeah and some of these people are very influential people obviously which is the other part of it right sometimes it's not about the quantity of people it's about getting the right people together to be able to do things um you mentioned that you have a dao um decentralized autonomous organization for those who don't know what dao means and that you took 50 percent of i think you said the royalties from the initial collection and you stuck it into kind of a treasury right and uh, I would love you to talk a little bit about how you structured the DAO in a little bit more detail and um, kind of how how it works. Sure. Yeah. So we, so we actually took 50 percent of our mint revenues from Karma, which is you know probably one of the highest oh, okay. of any. What was um, the mint price on that, by the way? It was 0.5 ETH at the okay. time. So it's wow. you know, significant. Yeah, we put, you know, 2000 ETH into this DAO and it is, you know, a Cayman Foundation. So it is separate from Metagood. And all of the NFT holders, you can be Karma or Genesis holder, are the people that, you know, can submit projects for funding. Um, we just finished, we're just finishing soon our second season. The first season was about OCM brand and community building. And people went and they literally started businesses together. Um, they've done creative endeavors. Like we have some OCM theme songs and um, AR, VR filters with OnChain Monkey. Um, uh, in the first uh, season, people found in Brazil and, and renovated or rehabilitated, I should say, a skate park that was kind of unusable um, by that community. And then if you look from top down, it looks like an on-chain monkey from kind of a drone down. So it was pretty cool. And then they did like a Brazilian rap competition there. Um, the second season of the DAO has been around building the bananas economy. As I mentioned, you know, if you are an on-chain monkey holder and you connect your wallet to on-chain monkey and you tweet about us or you're active in our discord, you can earn a banana. You can also, it's a give to earn mechanism. So if you join us, I could give you a banana and then I would earn a banana. And these bananas are used for everything from playing poker, like as ante, to one of these hats would be 100 bananas if you were to buy it through our um, merch for banana store. And, you know, the second, um, uh, you know, season of our DAO, we did around kind of, uh, you know, goods and services av av available for bananas. And so our community can, you know, we're basically creating utility for this off-chain token before there's any, you know, fiat, you know, direct fiat ties. But um, people use it to transact for NFTs. Uh, people use it for all sorts of things. And so we wanted our community to come up with creative use cases for people to be able to redeem their bananas. Um, and there's been a ton of really interesting stuff that have come out of the season. So tell us a little bit about like uh, we'd love to learn, you know, how how it works a little bit just so people could potentially model this. So you took half of your initial um, uh, NFT from the second NF major NFT launch, you stuck it into this treasury, 
And then there's an application process, like how much, what's the maximum amount you fund? Are there certain requirements? Like at least how it was in season one, just so people can understand a little yeah, bit. So in season one, we did five rounds of voting and, um, you know, we had different amounts of ETH, like some were, you know, one times five projects or two times five ETH projects. So we had, you know, five different rounds with different amounts of ETH. We changed it this season so that we're just doing three rounds. Um, each project gets five ETH. So there's two projects in each round. So it's about, you know, 30 ETH that we've spent season two and then 30 ETH we spent in season one. Um, we also have a small grants committee. So we have, you know, holders that um, it's kind of like, you know, uh, they basically are elected into these roles and they have control to to, to dole out um, less than two ETH in, in grants to um, different events. Um, they actually passed a pretty large prop, which was, you know, 25 ETH, which, you know, when ETH was at 2000 was about, you know, 50 grand to fund uh, IRL events over three months. And so it was actually really cool when I mentioned, you know, New York and what we did at the New York Stock Exchange. Um, that was actually our community planned three days of events from, of course, they did do the mon monkey misfit uh, workouts in Central Park for three days to art gallery tours, dinners, happy hours. Um, and all of that was funded through the Dow. So it was it was really a cool step as you think about like progressive decentralization, right? Um, that, you know, we we've now hired a, a, basically a contractor who works fully for the Dow. He's not a meta good employee. And um, it's it's really our holders that are kind of deciding how these funds are being used and, and, and using these funds to kind of activate um, different uh, activities. So what I'm hearing you say is you had a season one where you had five projects that were minted. I mean, that were approved um, that had up to five e each approximately, something along those lines, right? And um, did a bunch of people submit proposals and then it was up to the community to vote on them? And does, does everybody who owns one of these NFTs get a vote? Is that kind of how it works? Or do they get one vote for every NFT that they own? Just yeah, it's, it's one NFT for every, it's uh, one vote for any every NFT that you own. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then so we do have like some people that own, I mean, for example, we have a gentleman named Solman Gax who um, just tweeted over the weekend that he's created his uh, 100th set, which means he owns 100 Genesis monkeys, 100 K1 Karma 1 monkeys, and 100 K2 monkeys. So, you know, he has, you know, over 300 votes um, that he can put towards, you know, um, so how does the how does the DAO um, as the DAO depletes its resources? How does it regrow its resources? Do you understand? Like uh, like if you see sure. that this much, how does it keep the, the like when you do the project, you get a piece of the project? How does that work exactly? Um, so we're not uh, investment DAO, so we're not taking equity in these companies. It's more uh, because we have not you know when everyone came in, we didn't do KYC AML on anyone buying an NFT, so there, it's not an investment DAO. But it is, uh, you know, we can give grants out. And then a lot of the DAO projects have just decided to give a revenue share back to the DAO. And so um, whether it's a project like, um, there's a company called NFT Canvases, um, which, you know, is a token gated community that you can create really high quality prints, or they, they create high quality prints of your favorite NFTs and ship them to you. Um, they have a rev share with us. Um, there's some other... Uh, there's another gentleman out of Australia that, you know, creates conference, uh, like kind of, you know, when you go to a conference, you always have a lanyard with a name tag and he creates right. like these beautiful kind of hard name tags with your uh, on-chain monkey uh, on it. And, you know, so, you know, and also like a little QR code so people can link to your Twitter if they want to follow you. Um, so that, so there's, you know, s several of them that kind of give ref shares back to the DAO as well. So it, it is... Um, becoming self-sustaining, but we're still in early days. We've only done two rounds of it. So, yeah. So, um, okay. So let's talk about social good a little bit. Um, obviously you said, uh, uh, the original group that you were part of Acti, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, mm -hmm. obviously is very much focused on, on social good campaigns. And I would love to kind of talk about like how you, um, you mentioned some of this already, but how, you do social good and how that actually works just because there's others that might want to do a project like what you're doing. Um, can you share a little bit about how you decide which projects are the right projects to work with and so on and so forth? Sure. So, I mean, the, the first, uh, I guess, kind of charity related thing we did was, you know, three weeks into launching the project, we auctioned one of our Genesis monkeys 
off. And, you know, Roam, CEO of Dapper Labs and Charlie Lee, creator of Litecoin, bid it up to 12.5 ETH. So, you know, you know, almost, I think it was around $20,000 at the time. And um, Bill is on the board of a UNICEF group called Giga Connect, which is bringing internet, it's basically mapping all the schools globally, internet connectivity and bringing internet to the schools. So we uh, decided, you know, given how fortunate we are to all be in Web3, where you don't even think twice that you can connect on your phone or on your computer or however, you know, multiple ways to connect that, you know, we wanted to give to this cause that is, you know, really helping to close the digital divide between the have and have not. So um, that was one that came referred through Bill. Um, we've done things like, you know, when everything kind of started in Ukraine, we have a super talented art team and they created a mosaic of 25,000 Genesis monkeys and it's an earth with a heart over Ukraine. And, um, we sold that and, you know, raised 185 grand that then our NFT holders chose for that to go to save the children. We kind of gave different options for them to vote for those funds to go to. Um, so we've just, we've, you know, some of it has been, um, you know, just, you know, basically driven through the team wanting to do something. Some of it has been, you know, our holders deciding where the funds go. Um, there was another one where we auctioned a karma monkey and we kind of gave three different options of like, which UN SDG goal would it go to solve? And they wanted it around life below water. So we worked with one of our investors who founded Ocean Elders to work with this group um, out of the Bahamas called Coral Vita, which is kind of regrowing and creating biobanks for for coral reefs. And so we donated to them. Um, what's really cool is now at the Dow, this is where, you know, now our community can propose things and, you know, get funding. And so um, we've seen some really interesting projects as well, which have been, you know, community saying, hey, I want to support this, you know, nonprofit or, or this concept. And you can get you know everyone to to vote for that, and so it's kind of gone from you know the executive team um, to then you know through snapshot voting, the community voting, and now even more decentralized to really like being proposed and funded by the DAO. I love the idea that you're auctioning off some of the NFTs. My guess is you must have kept a decent amount of NFTs in the treasury to be able to do this kind of fundraising, right? Did you do that intentionally? We we do, yeah. I mean, we 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 I think of the first ten thousand Genesis, um, we have about five hundred, which is actually lower than some collections, Keith. You know, we probably could have taken more, but it is, you know, a big you know, obviously a large asset base that we're sitting on and we also have karma monkeys and um yeah. Yep. Very cool. Um just curious, like on the, um, you know, with all these like bananas and karma monkeys and all this kind of stuff, like, have you found it's a challenge to convey this to the holders, like how all the stuff works together? Or do you have any tips on like, cause obviously your team is very technical, right? And they can design a lot of things, but, um, have you found that a lot, most of your holders are actively doing things to earn these bananas and stuff, or is this more one of those kind of things where you have to work really hard to make sure everybody understands how all these little things connect to each other? No, I mean, I think for the most part, um, a lot of our community is pretty savvy in NFTs. And you look at Board 8 Club, Board 8 Yacht Club, and they had ApeCoin, which, you know, did quite well for people. And so people are pretty familiar with the concept of earning tokens. Um, and we have mentioned that, you know, at some point those tokens could go on chain, but we're not kind of giving any time frame for that. Um, so people have been very motivated to earn those bananas. Um I haven't checked the most recent stats, but I know as of at least a quarter of go, um, there've been over like a million bananas mined. Um, um, and people love to own them because we've done things like we've done banana auctions for IRL events. So we were one of the first companies to fund the first NASCAR driver to be fully funded by Web3 brands. Um, it turned out she was the only female race car driver last October in the Miami race. Um, and so we had, you know, on chain monkey, you know, on the side of her car and, um, we were able to get some VIP pit passes to that race. And so we, you know, did a, did a Twitter spaces and we auctioned those off for bananas. Um, there's all sorts of fun things that have kind of, well, I mean, beyond just buying NFTs with bananas, but, um, you know, definitely the people who come in, you know, with the big poker pots to be able to really just run the tables are people have <laughs> lots of bananas as well. So people, people find a lot of utility in the bananas. So, um, uh, we're going to get to the Bitcoin ordinal stuff in just a minute, but I just want to ask from a macro level meta good is meta good, a company, is it a nonprofit? Um, like what does meta good do and how is it separate than on chain monkey? I'm just curious. 
Yeah, MetaGood is the company. Um, we're fully for profit behind Onchain Monkey. So um, that's just the company uh, that we incorporated. Um, and then, you know, Onchain Monkey is the NFT collection we launched. Obviously, we've done the Genesis and then we did desserts and then we did um, we did uh, Karma. But, you know, we're doing a partnership. So I would say MetaGood is doing a partnership right now with Asprey Studio to launch the Asprey Bugatti egg collection. So Asprey is right. The jeweler from London, I think founded in 1781. They literally created like the furniture on the Titanic. Bugatti, as you know, is the you know, super luxurious car brand. Um, and they're creating 111 physical eggs. Um, there'll be carbon uh, eggs with like their diamond encrusted. Um, and we're the technology. So Metagood is the technology partner creating the generative art NFTs of those eggs that will be sold on Bitcoin. And so that's kind of, you know, so MetaGood has partnerships and then, you know, MetaGood launched on Chain Monkey. And you also said that you're about to launch another NFT project. When is that coming out? Uh, it's related to the on-chain monkey, right? Yeah. So Dimensions is the first uh, 3D animated interactive. Um, in fact, I don't know if I can show yeah. you know, this. Well, story. people won't be able to, they won't be able to. They won't, to, to, they won't be able to see it on the podcast. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that. So this is coming on the Bitcoin. Um, this is a Bitcoin ordinal NFT it's project. Bitcoin, yeah. That's what makes it unique is what I'm hearing. It's animated. So it's, you know, like instead of just the monkey, it's like a bust of the monkey, but it's turning and then the eyes are following you as it kind of goes around. And there's some very cool features that you can, you know, using your keyboard, get the monkey to stop rotating, get it to go around the, the other way. You can change the background. So, you know, some some of the backgrounds have Bitcoin coins falling in the background and you can um, do, do some really cool stuff with it. Um, those are being inscribed on some very early Satoshis um, from 2009 when Bitcoin was first started. So it's that's a very special collection. Those 300 are actually being created from um, the Genesis monkey that Anche Monkey holds. And so some of those are very rare, uh, like gold monkeys, alien monkeys. Um, and so people have a very decent chance of minting a, a grail or a very rare um, one of the dimensions if they buy the of the 300 Bitcoin. Um, and then we'll have 2,000 available for current Genesis holders. And what will be cool about that is if you get one of the 2,000, you'll actually get to select which monkey you want to turn into dimensions. So, you know, the rarer your Genesis collection is of monkeys, the rarer your dimension collection will be. Well, let's talk about Bitcoin ordinals because even for people that are DGENs, they don't totally understand Bitcoin ordinals, right? Like I was in your session at NFT NYC and it was, well, I mean, you were, it was somebody else's session and you got up to talk, but it was a very tiny little room and there was hardly anybody in the audience because as of today, at least, um, obviously Ethereum is kind of the king daddy when it comes to NFTs. So let's start by talking about what the heck is a Bitcoin ordinal, just so people can wrap their head around it. And then why did you guys decide to focus on it with your newer collections? Sure. So, you know, um, when we talk about Bitcoin ordinals, uh, there's basically an ordinals protocol. And I say ordinals with a capital O is basically a protocol, which is a system for numbering Satoshis. So it's giving um, a Satoshi a serial number and tracking them across transactions. And a Satoshi and, is, why don't you explain that for everybody? Uh, basically, uh, so, um, you know, basically individual Satoshis are unique and you can attach, you know, data to them. And a Satoshi is kind of the smallest um, measurement of Bitcoin. So like one millionth or something like that of a Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, give you the exact number. I think uh, every Satoshi is one, oh my gosh, is it a how million? Many zeros, how many zeros are there? Is I there think, six? I if think it's six, if there's more than yeah. six, more than a million. But it's 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 time. Yeah, it's it's. Let's see. It's uh. I'm looking it up. It's uh. A lot. Eight zeros. So what is that? Like one. Million. Yeah. So anyways, it's a small. Yeah. So every Satoshi is one over one with eight zeros of a Bitcoin, and that's an ordinal number. So that's like really the smallest kind of subdivision of a Bitcoin. Um, and you know, as you're tracking those Satoshis. Um, that's all ordinal theory, but basically just, you know, to, to, to summarize, it's, it's how people are putting, um, digital assets onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, it's very early. Um, this, this protocol was just developed in February, 2023. So before that, there wasn't really an easy way to inscribe anything on Bitcoin. Um, and there are different ways that people do it. So the way that we did it, 
um, was very energy efficient because we were able to put all 10,000 of our Genesis um, NFTs on chain in a single ordinal. So it only took up um, 20,000 bytes of space. So 2,000 bytes per image, um, which is, you know, it get, like, again, like no Bitcoin Maxi is going to be upset with that because that's very, it's a very, very small footprint. Um, and, you know, we believe just like, you know, Ethereum, Polygon, Solana, all saw significant value in the NFTs coming to their ecosystem that Bitcoin has not yet seen that bump. And so, you know, being twice the market size, market cap size of Ethereum, being the most decentralized, being the most secure L1 layer, um, we're very excited for very high value digital assets to be inscribed um, on Bitcoin. And, and that's that that's where I think we think the market's going. Um, you know, we'll be down in Miami for Bitcoin Miami next week. And there's two conferences just separate from Bitcoin Miami uh, talking about ordinals. Uh, cause it's, it's, it's very early days, but you know, there's a huge group of, of people that believe that this is kind of the next big, big wave in NFTs. Yeah. And for those that are listening, um, that are, um, confused about even getting Ethereum NFTs, well, Bitcoin's <laughs> a little bit more confusing, right? The good news is I know that, um, major exchanges are now not open C, but, um, there are other, and I'm drawing a blank on the names of them. Ma- Magic Eden has launched Binance, sure. just so that they're going to launch ordinals. Um, there's yeah. marketplaces like Gamma, which are just set up for ordinals. Do you need Bitcoin to be able to buy these, or can you buy them with ETH? These um, you do need you need you do need to get Bitcoin, but there are wallets like Hero and Xverse and a number of other ones that are all launching. So you know, similar to MetaMask to get Ethereum, there are. Um, recognize wallets that people are using um, to be able to transact in Bitcoin. Yeah. And, and the exciting thing is it's super, super, super early days. I mean, like someone listening to this in the future might be like, oh, they're mainstream now. <laughs> well, we're here at the beginning of it, right? Um, Amanda, I, I would love to hear your thoughts like on the entire NFT space kind of in Web3 in general, like look into the future a couple of years and just tell us where you think this is all heading. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I think the the main takeaway for today is this is all early. So the fact that you're even listening to this podcast and interested in this topic means that you are, uh, you might not be an early adopter, but at least a, a curious mind on early and formative technologies. Um, and that, you know, we see this as kind of the, the next big wave that, um, you know, high value digital assets, be it art, music, um, who knows, maybe even property rights will be written to these blockchains because they're kind of immutable um, because of the um, provenance, uh, because, yeah, they're there. It's 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 a it's a it's a good way to store data and information if you can do it in an energy efficient way. And so I think we're one of the only teams at Metagood that's been able to do it um, in the way that we have in terms of inscribing 10,000 NFTs, you know, in a, in a single ordinal. Um, and you know, we've actually as a team probably inscribed the most ordinals of any project period. So we, we've, 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 we've been doing kind of a lot of inscriptions on, um, the Bitcoin blockchain and, you know, only some of them we're now starting to make public, but we're, we're, we're really excited. Um, you know, we, we really view, um, Bitcoin, you know, being the most decentralized, most secure L1 as a, as a great and huge opportunity to put kind of these high value assets and, um, feel very lucky to, get to work with the team that I work with. Um, you know, we have an incredibly um, passionate, engaged community that loves to get together online. We love to get together offline. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough to create, you know, some significant value for them. Um, but also, you know, along the way, we've we've done some some real world good. And so um, it's, it's very empower- empowering every day to wake up and feel like you're building this company that is making a significant Im- impact in people's lives and then enriching them to go on and do good in the world. Outstanding. Uh, if people want to discover more about um, your company, Metagood or OnChain Monkey, where do you want to send them? And then if they want to connect with you on the socials, do you have a preferred place that you want them to go? Yeah, I would say um, you know a lot of NFT people are on Twitter and Discord. So definitely OnChain Monkey on Twitter would be the best spot. Um, we do have a website on chainmonkey.com. We also have metagood.com, which talks a little bit more about the social impact. Um, my Twitter handle is Amanda, uh, T E R R Y. So people can, I'm, I am docs, so they can, um, they can follow me there as well. 
Um, and then if there's any questions or inquiries about partnerships, um, hello at metagood.com is a good spot. And we have a team of people that are following that email and we'll get back to you. Amanda, Terry, thank you so much for coming on the show and answering my litany of questions. I, I, I can't wait to see where you guys go with all this. I think your interview was excellent. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much.